the woodland. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Bob, uh, do you know what this gadget is? <laughs> of course I do, Marin. That's a plow. <laughs> That's right. And uh, which uh, way do you have to look when you're plowing, son? Well, you have to keep your eyes ahead of you all the time to make a straight furrow. Mm-hmm. And uh, when a man's plowing, he ain't got any time for looking back. What if you made a mistake, like, oh, say, for instance, you made a bad turn and started the next furrow too far over or something like that? Well, I've made a lot of mistakes plowing, but... I can't correct them. I just keep right on a-going and learn by my mistakes. Every time I come around, I see where I made the mistake, and I remember it, and learn how not to make the same mistake again. Gradually, as I plow up more of the field and move farther away from the mistake, I forget about it. Don't fret over it. Pretty soon, I can't even see it. But I never forget the lesson it taught me. Well... Why not go back and try to correct the mistake right after you make it? Uh, son, you'd make a bigger mess of it than as if you left it alone. Those are the words of a wise man to a younger man. Great words of wisdom born out of a rich experience with life and with the Lord. I'm not going to palaver much about today's story because it speaks for itself and right to the point. So what do you say we get on with it, huh? I like to call this one Broken Bootstraps. Hey, Bob! Oh, Bob! Bob! Yeah? What do you want? Hold up a second. Well, aren't you even going to say good morning? Why should I? It isn't a good morning for me. Uh-oh. I see old man Satan's busted your bootstraps again, huh? If you mean I'm down in the dumps, I guess you're right. Well, listen here, young fella. This is a good morning in spite of how you feel. We're both healthy. We've had some food to eat. We've got clothes to wear, and we live in a free country. Also, the Lord's given us a bright, sunshiny day and good weather. What? Even if it were raining or blustery, it would still be a good morning. Now, wouldn't it? It all depends on how you look at it. That's all? Yep, it sure is. How about looking at it over a cup of coffee and a sweet roll? I'll treat. Bill, why waste your time on me? You know I'm an incurable pessimist. I don't know any such thing, Bob. Come on, let's get that coffee. Don't get lost in that revolving door. Uh, <laughs> now, there's, there's a booth over there. Yeah. There we are. What'll it be, fellas? Oh, a uh, coffee and a piece of that awful-looking but delicious-tasting coffee cake. <laughs> okay. Oh, what do you have, sir? Uh, same thing, I guess. Two cups of mud and two pieces of crazy cake. Hey, okay. that's it. I couldn't think of the name of it. Crazy cake. Coming right up. Where'd they ever get a name like that? Crazy One cake. One bite and you're crazy for more. Made right here. It looks like a crazy mess, but it's delicious. Here you are, boys. Thank you. 
Now you're uh, new here, aren't you? Yes, been here a couple of days. Where have you been hiding, Hansel? I never hide. Well, you should eat homeless. I know all about you, Mr. Bill Jefferson. You're a celebrity, Bill. And how? I sure don't understand how a handsome guy like you has remained a bachelor so long. The secret is not to come in here too often. <laughs> All right. I'll bide my time. Yellow, if you want more coffee? Okay. Well, when's the lecture start, Bill? Lecture? What lecture? Oh, you know, all that stuff about don't let discouragement get you down and courage as part of a real man, all that sort of stuff. No lecture this morning, Bob. <sighs> what do you know? He's finally given up hope. No. Well, why haven't you? Everyone else has. Even my wife, no. She told me I should get a job in the city instead of trying to make a go of it on the ranch. As a matter of fact, that's why you caught me walking around town so early. Mm -hmm. It's a little early in the day to be looking for a job, all right? And I don't think you'd better wear cowpokes clothes, either. Oh, I wasn't looking for a job. I was just walking. Marge and I had a real blowout this morning, and it, and it shook me up pretty bad. Mm -hmm. No argument? No, we before? haven't. No. Well, a little tiff once in a while, but, but nothing like this. You're getting so bad, you're getting on your own nerves, is that it? I guess that just about sums up the situation. Mm -hmm. When a fellow gets downright nasty and mean to his wife, he'd better stop and think it over. You know... I'm worse than a bear just out of hibernation when I get this discouraged. Uh, what brought on this extra large grouse this time, man? Oh, nothing in particular and everything in general. You know, just little things. Work schedule shot to pieces by delays. One of my men had an accident and he's laid up when I need him most. Mm -hmm. Bill's coming in. Money going out and nothing to stop it. Say, uh, since you're just roaming around this morning, how about taking a ride in my car out to see a friend of mine? Yeah. Okay. What's there to lose? All right. Let's get started. Huh? Where are we going? We're going to find out what courage can do. Spread this is. Look at those barns and silos. What a layout. Yeah. This is the double box M ranch bomb. What's it take in for size, the whole county? <laughs> Just about. Okay, let's get out, huh? Yeah, that's uh, Myron sitting in the easy chair on the porch. Uh, let's have a chat with him. Whatever you say. Is he the owner? Yeah. Although his son Mark and he own the spread half and half. Bill, Bill Jefferson. Well, come on up here and sit down. <laughs> Myron, how are you? <laughs> oh, it's good to see you, Bill. So very good. Yeah, thank you. It's good to see you, too. Uh, who's your uh, young friend there? Uh, this is Bob Benfelt. Oh, how do you do, Bob? Pretty fair, mister. Uh, Just call me Myron, Bob. Okay. Say, this is quite a spread you've got here. Yes, it is. Say, aren't you the young fellow that just started building your own spread over near Tuttle's Corners? Uh, yeah. How'd you know about that? <laughs> uh, when you get my age, son, and sort of loaf around most of the time, you get to learning lots of things. I suppose you do. But this place doesn't look like there's much loafing going on around here. Well, Mark runs things now. It's only the last few years I've taken it easy. Got a touch of arthritis, and, well, the doc says I got to slow down. <laughs> he means he only works six or eight hours a day instead of ten or twelve. That's <laughs> about what I figured. Well, Myron, uh, we start by because I'd like Bob to hear how you got this spread. Bob's kind of got weak bootstraps, and they break every once in a while. Bill means I'm an incurable pessimist, and I'm afflicted with being permanently discouraged since my wife and I started our own spread. Yeah, that's what I figured, son. We all have that trouble to begin with. Well, how do you mean, we all have it? By the looks of things, you didn't. Oh, <laughs> didn't I now? 
Well, you just sit right down there and listen for a spell. You got some learning to do. I'd like to hear your story. <laughs> it isn't a story, Bob. It's a fact. Hard and cold fact. Why, when Hazel and me arrived out here 40 years ago, it was pretty rough. Mark was just a little fella then. And... Well, Hazel, this is the place. This is the ranch we bought? Yep, this is the ranch we bought. You're terribly disappointed, aren't you? Oh, yes, Marina. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. <laughs> Should we go back home and forget about this? No, no. This is our home. You wouldn't be happy anywhere else, but here I, I know that from the look on your face. <laughs> you don't see the... The dirty buildings and that run-down house. <laughs> you don't see the broken fences and those weed-covered grounds, do you, honey? No, my dear, I, I don't see them at all. I see here someday a, a great ranch. The buildings painted white and every board in good repair. I see a nice, comfortable house and home. I see well-kept fences and a thousand cattle in the pastures and ranges... I see a ranch and a farm that our son can be proud of. And our son's son. Hazel, we're the roots of a great tree of family heritage and tradition that will be built here. And in all these things, we'll honor God. Oh, you should have seen us, Bob. Hazel and I both on horseback. She was holding Mark in her arms, and I was riding the herd on a dozen head of cattle that was the beginning of the great herd we have here today. In fact, uh, well, right over there in the window stands a hand-carved likeness of our first great herd bull. <laughs> Old Powder Nose, we called him. <laughs> <laughs> Old Powder Nose? Where'd you ever get a name like that? <laughs> well, Mark gave it to him because the bull always put his nose into the dusty ground and blew the dust all around. Uh, I'll tell you more about old Powder Nose later on, but uh, let me pick up my story. Hazel, can you keep an eye on things until I get the wagon up here? Oh, sure, I'll manage. You sure? Of course I am. I'll go up to the house and see what it looks like inside, and, and I'll take care of Mark till you get back. Uh, be alert for rattlers inside the house. It's been empty for quite some time now. Well, I'll be careful. Now, go on. Get. <laughs> <laughs> get in. Oh, Mark. Either your daddy's the bravest man in the world, or, or he's the craziest. But, you know, I kind of think he's the bravest. And we'll help him all we can, won't we, honey? That a boy. Come on. Whoa, Patch. Whoa there, boy. Now, come on, Mark. There we are. You and Mommy will go inside. Now, there we are. And we'll see what it looks like. And I hope it doesn't fall on our heads. Daddy sure wasn't joking about this place being empty a long time. It looks to me like it's never been lived in. <gasps> a rattlesnake! <laughs> come on, I guess you and Mommy better wait outside for Daddy to come with the wagon. Then he can clean out the house of all these varmints and rattlesnakes. You shouldn't have tried to sleep out the house all at one time. There's too much dust. Oh. I'll be all right. You can come in now. No, uh, no rattlers? <sighs> no rattlers. Good. I looked the whole house over carefully. Even the cellar. 
Safe. I'll get the scythe out soon as I've unloaded the wagon and cut the weeds and grass down around the house so nothing can hide in them. What are we going to do for, for water and heat? I don't know yet, but we'll manage somehow. Don't worry about it. I don't worry about it. Myron, how can you say that? Just look at this awful place. And now we don't even have water or heat. Well, it's still not too late to turn back. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. I, it's just that everything's so, so difficult. Yes, I know it is, Hazel. But we're young and healthy and strong. I know that that's true, but how are we ever going to make a, a nickel off this, this wilderness weed patch? Well, you know, in the book of Isaiah, it's written, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. I guess Marge and I have it pretty easy compared to the days when you and your wife and Mark started out here, Myron. I should say so. Well, now it's all in how you look at it. Young people of today have different problems than we had when Hazel and I were young, but it still takes the same brand of God-given courage to make the grade. Well, a couple of years rolled by, and we worked hard. Hazel tried to help where she could, but uh, I'm not the kind of man that can let a woman do a man's work, so she only did what her strength and womanly dignity would allow. Uh, then one evening... Daddy, dog tired, huh, Daddy? <laughs> oh, yes, Mark, Daddy is dog tired. Daddy, what kept me helping in the hay? Someday soon you'll be able to help bring in the hay, honey. Right now you're a wee bit small and it's bedtime. Mark! Bedtime! Coming, Mother! Night, Daddy. Good night, little fella. Sleep tight. Pleasant dreams. Fellas, fast asleep. Do you say something, oh, dear? I'm sorry I woke you, honey. Oh, that's all right. I was just taking 40 winks, I guess. Oh, now, why don't you go to bed now before you doze off again? I uh, uh, thought I'd read Capper's Farmer before I turned oh, in. Oh, yes. Sure you will. Can't even read your own name. You're so tired. <laughs> good night, Hazel. Wind up the cat and put out the clock like a good girl, huh? <laughs> all right, I will. Good night, sleepyhead. Uh, Myron. You're, hmm? you're going to have to get a hired hand, a, a cowboy. Hmm? What are you going to pay him with, Ross? No, we'll have to figure out something. You're working so hard, you're losing weight, and, and you're overtired all the time, and you know it. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, please help us get a hired hand so Myron won't have to work so hard. Oh, you, you know we can't really afford help. Oh, but we need a good, strong man to help Myron. Please help us find this man and then be able to, to work out some way to pay him. In Jesus' name, amen. Howdy, ma'am. My name's... Don't you move, mister. I can shoot the head off a rattler real good, so just don't move. Where'd you come from, anyway? Don't shoot, ma'am. I mean no harm. Please don't shoot. Hazel, put your six-gun away. But, but, Myron, we don't know who he is or what he's up to. He might be an outlaw. Relax, girl. Can't you see he's unarmed? Besides, he looks hungry. Well, well all right, I'll... 
I'll fix up something for him to eat. I, I just hope he's not an outlaw or a rustler. Oh, ma'am, that was sure powerful good. Powerful good. Well, I'm glad. Now that you've had your fill, you'd better be moving along. Hazel, what kind of hospitality is that? Turning a man off in the night. Are you afraid of him with me here? I, I don't know, Myron. It's just that he, he gave me such a start. I'm most sorry, ma'am. I, I really am. I knowed you was praying to the good Lord, and I'm most sorry I skittered you the way I did. Hub, what are you doing walking out on the prairie at this time of night? Well, I was just coming here like I was told. Like you were told? Well, by whom? By Parson Whitcomb, Parson ma'am. Whitcomb? Parson Whitcomb? Yes, sir, ma'am. This here letter will tell you all about me and why and what for and whomsoever and all that kind of stuff. Let's see that. Let's see here what it says. Oh, Myron, that's Parson Whitcomb's right, and sure as I'm standing here. Yeah, it is. Well, well land sakes, huh? why didn't you get here before dark and you wouldn't have come so close to getting shot? My, uh, my poor aching feet wouldn't go no faster, ma'am. But... Why is Parson Whitcomb sending you to us? We're as poor as church mice. Oh, I'll say. I want the truth, Herb. Let's get started on the right foot right now. We're, we're trying to help you, Hub, not hurt you. If and I told you, you might send me back, and I like it here already a lot. Ah, we won't send you back. At least not until we've had a chance to prove you. Parson Whitcomb says right here in the letter you accepted the Lord as your Savior. Yes, ma'am, I sure did. But that was after it happened. What happened? Well, I tried to rustle some steers and got caught. Mm-hmm. And Parson Whitcomb went before the judge and got you freed on the promise that you'd come out here and make good. Yes, sir, th that's it. Oh, well, this, this won't go any farther than Hazel and I. No, we'll fix you a bed, and we'll all try and get some sleep. You mean you're not going to turn me out? Well, why should we turn you out? Because, because I, I'm a crook. Oh, well, one mistake doesn't make a crook. Now, let's not mention it anymore, huh? We just wanted to know. Now that we do, it's all forgotten. Yippee! Oh, for land's sake, control yourself. You wake the baby. Baby? You got young'uns, too? Yes, a little boy. His name is Mark. Oh, that's fine, ma'am. Real fine. I'll be his big brother and watch over him real close. I'll work hard, real hard. You just wait and see. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Oh, yeah. Only, we can't pay you wages yet. Just room and board and clothes. Maybe a little pocket money now and again until we get on our feet. Uh, that's fine, sir. Mighty fine with me. I asked the Lord to give me a good home, and he did. He answered my first prayer real fine. He answered ours too, Hub. Well, Hub stayed on, and he was the answer to our prayers all right. He was strong, ambitious, obedient, and, and intelligent, and he grew in his experience with the Lord. Hazel and I watched Mark follow Hub's footsteps. Hub was Mark's big brother, all right. And Hazel and I thanked the Lord over and over again. Then one day, Hub and I and Mark went to town to the freight depot. A group of my friends and neighboring ranchers were standing around looking at a I've brand new tractor and plow I standing on the platform. I'm telling you, I just ain't seen anything. Howdy, like boys. Howdy, Myron. Uh, Hi, Buck and Cliff. How y'all been? Say, uh, Myron, looks like Sodbusters is trying to come yeah. into the valley. <laughs> yeah, it does look that way, doesn't it? I wonder whose tractor and plow this is anyway. Well, it's mine. I'm the Sodbuster. Have you gone loco, Myron? Gone loco? He is loco. I can just see him now, playing with his new toy. Oh, <laughs> hey, now, 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 what's a big idea, anyway? Oh, I'm going to make some money. With that? <laughs> oh, well, you just tell us some more about this here brainstorm of yours, or, or is it a big secret? Oh, no, I'm, I'm going to grow my own grain and corn to finish feeder steers for market. 
You ain't yeah. serious, really. Oh. I mean, you with one of the finest young breeding herds in the state. Sure. Yeah, but that fine young breeding herd isn't making any money for me yet. Oh. It's too young. Well, you just got to be patient, Myron, like the rest of us had to be. I'm not going to starve to death like most of you did. What about the bad grass years, bad winters? I'm going to grow high-protein hay and good grain and corn and fat and marketable steers every year and sell them for cash. Wow, is he being pumped full of hot air. What book have you been reading? Good books, Buck. Yeah, book farmer. Oh. <laughs> book farmer. Right. Yeah, never You're a again. book farmer. That's all you are. <laughs> did it work, Myron? <laughs> yes, it did, Bob. I started with a few head of feeders. Each year, as the ground produced better crops, the feeder herd got larger. And each year, the cash returns got larger, too. Soon, every rancher in the valley was doing the same thing. We had to grow our own feed because it was too expensive to truck it over the mountains. Uh, then came two wet years, and the small grain harvest was very small and of poor quality. One morning, Cliff and Buck stopped by to see what I was going to do to harvest more grain the third year. Myron, how are you going to harvest your grain this year? With a combine. A combine? You, you mean you ain't going to use a threshing machine? Nope. Lose too much grain that way. It won't work. Your grain will heat up in the bin. Burn your granary to the ground. No, it won't, Buck. Well, you say it won't, but, but how are you going to stop it? Ventilation. Use stovepipes to ventilate the interior of the bin of gray. <laughs> Did it work? <laughs> yes, sir. Very well, Bob. The grain didn't heat up in the bin. <laughs> Boy, you sure know your stuff. But how could you make so many radical changes when they laughed at you and criticized you? <laughs> well, it, it took courage, son. God-given courage. That's right. After having such a rough beginning, everything went smoothly after that, didn't it? It did not. Why, the drought of 28 and the winter of 30 took a heavy toll, but we survived. We lost breeding stock from accidents, and a valuable cow got caught in a fence and pulled her spine out of whack trying to get free. That one cost us $30,000. I know you're amazed, Bob, but... Courage and faith in the Lord's promises is the answer to the success of this spread. <laughs> well, thanks, Byron, but we got to be running along now. Yeah, glad to help, Bill. Come back again and don't make it so long between visits. Now. I'll do that. Uh, say hello to Hazel and Hub and Mark for me. I'll do that. And, uh, Bob. Yes, sir? If you let the Lord mend your broken bootstraps so he can lift you up, They'll never break again. Thank you, sir. I'll remember that when I get discouraged. Our story today doesn't end in the usual manner with my rangers and I saving somebody's life as death reaches out to snatch them from us or some other equally harrowing experience. No, this story ends quietly and peacefully. A young man who was so very discouraged and beaten by his problems has found new strength, new hope, and new courage. And this time his supply of courage won't be exhausted because he knows where he can get an immediate fresh supply and the Lord always has it ready in abundance. You try it as Bob did and you'll find out too. We'll see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! <laughs> Ranger Bill comes to you transcribed from the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago.